even though I said I wasn't going to carry thoughts from one train to the other, but I have to, I have to finish this one. That story's actually done. Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. Uh, this is part four of the four-part early morning AM series for today. Uh, we are doing a fourth part only because I was about to tell a story, and I hate not to tell a story. So I told the story about the, uh, my friend shooting a hole in the wall next to my head in his house and us hiding it, but it reminded me of another time. Um, I had a buddy who's, uh, who's a rock star now. Um, he, uh, he was at a party one day, and uh, he was being it himself. He's a boisterous lad, and uh, I think he put his head through a wall. And uh, it was one of those things where they weren't supposed to have a party, blah, blah, blah. And now the kid whose house they were having the party in is like in panic mode. He's like, you got to find a way to fix this wall. I would be in so much trouble. So, of course, um, I, I tend to be people's go-to guy when they need something fixed. They just, for some reason, they think I'm capable. And I am. I'm generally good at a lot of things. And if I'm not, I can figure out how to do it. And uh, he knew this about me. So he brought me there. He showed me where he could literally put his head through the wall. And I was like, ha, ah, that's, that's, a, that's a big hole in the drywall. So I said, okay, take me to, take me to Lowe's. So I, I, bought, I bought some shims. I bought uh, a little scrap of drywall um, spackle. So um, I did the repair. I, uh, I I made a I, I made a I made the whole square. I made a, a drywall patch the exact same size. Um, I screwed that to a piece of wood uh, or two pieces of wood, and then I uh, I screwed outside that. I, I screwed more drywall screws into the board that I had attached to the back of that. So like you know, I slid it in, and then I attached it. Uh, I took some. Took some, I sanded down the area around it, um, made a tiny little bevel, tiny little belly, which I re then filled in with spackle. Uh, let it dry. Um, I can't remember if this was a two-day project or I just waited hours for it to dry. Uh, spackled and sanded again, waited for it to dry, uh, primed and painted it. Like this was... Uh, it, it took about a day. I mean, the actual labor was, I don't know, feels like it was 20 minutes. Most of the time was we spent waiting for a spackle to dry, but uh, I did the repair and it was, uh, it was seamless. Um, and uh, I think you could tell um, just the, the paint, it had been painted there. Um, I think, uh, like if, if if you looked, and I think what happened was the kid was nervous, so he told, he ended up telling his parents that um, you know what had happened, but they were, he didn't get in trouble because they were so impressed with the fact that he took the, uh, like you know he had he had it repaired, <laughs> like well you you fixed it so um, you blah 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 the actions. I wasn't there for this part. I, I heard about this later, like through the guy that actually created the hole told me that his buddy didn't even get in trouble because he relayed what a great job I did uh, patching the wall. So uh, so if you're having a party and your, your punk rock friend uh, pops his head through the wall, I'm your guy, apparently. That, that was it. That was the story I had to tell. It, it, barely filled four minutes of this video so now now I've committed to another 16 minutes of content I, I got nothing I'm bone dry that, that was that was literally it that was my last story there are no other stories you now know everything oh wait no you don't I hate to keep 
going on and on about this, but um, let me let me just try circulating outside air. This is unbelievable. What I should do tomorrow, I think this is a good idea. I think what I'll do tomorrow is uh, take my wife's car to work because she lives she lives much closer to work than I do. Um, and I'm just kind of curious if the same thing happens to me tomorrow on my way to work that uh, happens has happened every single day this week and I think last week where I just get very, very not well. Yeah, there's that... Like it literally just hit me again. Like that cold cold clammy feeling turn the seat heat on turn the cabin temperature up this this is a bizarre pattern I, I I hate to focus on it but it's just it's bizarre it keeps happening exactly the same way isn't good. This, this being ill on my way to work and then being ill for the first hour when I'm at work, this may be the secret to my weight loss. Um, if it is, I'm going to market it as a uh, as a program. I got, I got to think of a catchy name. Something that won't frighten people away. for this uh, last thing I want to do is chew while making a video but I'm going to try chewing some gum I'm going to try unwrapping gum I definitely hate to do this to you. Could stop recording, but that would be too easy. I guess on the other hand, you could stop watching. You sick bastard. This doesn't happen, like it's not, it's not a time of the day thing. This doesn't happen on the weekends and it doesn't happen on Wednesday when I'm remote. But it's been happening every single day. Like I just get, I just start feeling sick and then the chills hit me like a ton of bricks.
can't be the coffee because I don't always get the coffee from the same place and it's not and even when I get it from different places it's not even the same coffee my morning routine varies There's the only thing that's the same is being in this car I definitely have to try swapping out cars tomorrow I'm looking in all the wrong places. A few years ago, I I don't I really don't like going to the doctor. It's probably part of the problem with me right now. But um, a few years ago, I went to the to the dentist, and I started going pretty regularly to have my teeth cleaned. I stopped going because one day, like, you, it's, it's, it's funny, um, I, I've talked about social anxiety and things like that. So once you get a guy, I use the term guy loosely, it doesn't, but it's just when you get a guy, like when you get a, a hairstylist or a, a, a barber or a dentist or a doctor, you kind of got that locked down. Back when they rolled out Obamacare, um, I lost my doctor. I have no idea where I put him. And uh, so, for the most part, I just don't go to the doctor anymore because uh, I don't know this guy. This guy doesn't know me. I, I was lucky enough uh, back then to have a doctor that was like an old style doctor. Like, he was very familiar with the individual patients. He could, like, look at you and, uh, you know know that you, something was different, whether you gained weight, lost weight, pale, um, arm was missing, you just pick right up on that. Now, doc, it's just, uh, you don't get to see a doctor, you, you see, uh, I don't know, a nurse practitioner or something like that, and it's just uh, almost like those uh, auto body places, I don't know if I ever talked about it, but there's a guy who had a contract with the police department, and um, going to garage on a uh, off of uh, Aramingo and he wasn't allowed to fix anything other than what the uh, the complaint read so if the uh, if the front left headlight was out he could only replace front left head, right headlight even if even if he saw that there was an oil leak and things like that it's like he wasn't like no you can't do anything other than the complaint Anyway, you go to the doctor's office. Like they, well, one, all they do is test you for COVID. Like you walk in with a stab wound. Like, well, you don't have COVID. You're fine. Go home. It's like, no, no, no. I'm, it's not why I'm here. Um, I've already experienced this. Like I've, I've been sick. It's like I go, I'm going to the doctor because I'm sick. They discover I don't have COVID and they send me home. It's like I didn't come here to get tested for COVID. I came here because I'm sick. So I'm t tired, tired of going to doctors. Just a pain in the ass. What was my point? Doctors. I was going somewhere else with the story entirely. Oh, right. So you get a guy, and you're used to that guy. And when that you no longer have that guy, you don't like. I don't want to break in a new guy, and all the new guys suck. So the story about the dental hygienist is I had the same, I had the same girl every time I went there. Like she was the one that originally scaled my teeth. And then she was the one that handled my follow-up cleanings. Then one day I went and she, like, they scheduled me for a time when she was on vacation. And I got this other girl and she sucked at it. She, I don't know if she sucked at it. She did it completely differently and I wasn't happy with the experience and I haven't gone back since. But the whole point of the story is if you've never had your teeth scaled, don't do it. It's not painful. Um, it can be depending on how bad your teeth are, I guess, and what your threshold of pain is. But... The thing that happens if you've never had your teeth scaled, which means just it's a deep cleaning where they remove any tartar that's built up over your lifetime and things like that. What what you'll find is you have to floss after that. Like once you have your teeth scaled, you, a daily routine is now flossing. It's just something you absolutely have to do, not just every once in a while when you think you've got something in your teeth. And it, it, I know you're supposed to floss anyway. Don't judge me. And now of course I do because one day, years ago I had my teeth scaled 
and it opens up um, all this wonderful real estate between your teeth, um, which means when you eat, you, uh, you know, I'm tr not trying to be disgusting, but this just, we all eat, and, um, you know, brushing doesn't clean those areas out, um, so you have to floss now. So if you ever have your teeth scaled, be prepared to be, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you away from being healthy. It's, it's healthy, and it's a good idea to have a clean mouth, but just be aware, if you have your teeth scaled, you will probably have to floss for the rest of your life, daily. But I don't go to the dentist anymore either because my girl wasn't there one day. That's how I live my life. How did I make it to adulthood? I didn't. is helping a little bit. I think I heard that once. If you're feeling nauseous, chew gum. This is anecdotal. It's a one-time off, so who knows if it worked or if it just passed. But um, all those crazy gestures that uh, the Italians do, they all have meanings. It's, it's almost, it's, uh, it's like a sign language. Um, I was watching a video yesterday that uh, was uh, talking about a bunch of the, uh, the popular ones. This is, this is basically a teaser. I'm not going to have a time to go through them. If we're lucky, um, I don't know if it's considered luck, but if I remember, the ones from the video I can remember, I'll, I'll, I'll go over them. They're... They're kind, most of them are self-explanatory. You, you, you probably knew what they meant. Um, I gotta stop circulating outside here. This is just, this is too much. Um, you'll, you'll probably have known what many of them mean. Um, I'll probably remember even fewer of them this afternoon when I do the video, but um, it's just interesting, like all these little hand gestures that Italians do when they're talking mean things. They have very specific meanings. I guess in certain parts of Italy, like these may not be universal. Um, who knows? But uh, yeah, if I, if I remember this afternoon, I'll, I'll go over a, a couple that I remember from the video. Oh, there, there it is, okay. So yeah, so there is a, there is a pretzel factory in that, um, John B over there. Again, I don't have time to stop. One of these days, one of these days when I, uh, when I get on the road five minutes earlier, um, I will stop at the pretzel factory. And get pretzels for my team. They do like it if you if you if you get like a ridiculous amount, like if you get like 50 pretzels, they like you to call ahead. Um, so maybe, maybe I will look up their number when I get home today and call ahead for pretzels. Put it in my phone so I can call ahead when uh, when I know I'm going to make it. helps it doesn't cure it I still still not enjoying the ride
ride, looking forward to an hour from now when I'm going to feel better again. But that's the last 20 minute segment. Um, this is the end of the, uh, huh. The outside looks much brighter on the camera than it does in real life. It is not that bright outside. Uh, that's interesting. Anyway, that, that, that's the end of this video. Uh, have a wonderful day.